I feel like my frame is ever so slightly wonky. It's pissing me off quite considerably. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Allen and welcome to another repop with me. Oh my God, it's really hot in here. I've just filmed another video and then I've had to set this one up and just that little bit of movement in this shop has absolutely killed me. It sucks. Today we're doing a little bit of work in the shop. So it's a little bit of a repop with me, a little bit of a work with me. I've already taken these plants out of the lecker because last time a lot of you guys said that the lecker was a little bit triggering and it was a bit noisy. So I'm gonna do my best to eliminate that for you as much as possible today. That might mean I'm doing more talking and less movement with my hands because obviously I can't talk and pot at the same time and I'm using Lekka. Obviously I have some questions written down and today we've got a couple of things, literally two different plants. On this side I have Pareso Verde that is, it's ridiculous, it needs propagated, it's too big now. It's getting to the point where these things are actually too big to put in a box. So of course we need to cut them down. So I'll put them back very carefully and on this side we have some really gorgeous, really delicate, philodendron glorious if you don't know this is oh my god sorry it's lecker it's stuck to the root this is a hybrid of philodendron melanochrysum and philodendron gloriosum very tough plants awesome plants so i'm going to go through those i'm going to propagate them and i'm going to pot them up i'll probably pot them up and put them down there because there's not enough space i'm in the middle of an aisle today and oh, jesus i feel like i'm getting really um what's the word wet I'm just gonna get started. Apologies if this lecker causes a little bit of havoc. Right, I'm gonna get right into the questions. I don't think we've got a ton of questions, but I also don't think we have a ton to do. A lot of this is gonna be chopping and then obviously I'll pot last. I'll chop everything first so there's less noise and it's less of a headache to edit. Okay, first question, easy question, the hair. The amount of people that said something about my hair on my last two videos was insane. Because obviously I filmed them on the same day, that's why I look the same. Yeah, I bought a wave maker like a little weird, like, not like a crimpy thing. It, it makes waves, not crimps. But I bought one of those basically to kind of test out and I, I kind of like it. Now I did it this morning before I came here. I've got a little bit sweaty, unfortunately, which really sucks. This is brand new hair. I've just had it colored. That's why it's ridiculously blonde. Um, and it, it's dropping real fast in the unit. It's not actually staying how it should be because it's just so humid in here. It's like 80%. I waved this this morning. I set it the best I could. I got in here and literally within five minutes, it was just kaput. It's kind of sad that I can't keep it looking as good as I want it to be. So yeah, when I wave it and it looks like this, believe me, I have tried. It just, I can't keep up with the humidity here. So don't be surprised if you see this hair literally everywhere because I am loving it. I think it looks quite nice on me. I think it allows me to wear less makeup. I'm all for it. So if you see it a lot, get used to it because it's, I'm probably going to wear it all summer. Um, but yeah, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, if you want a tutorial, I guess, on how I did it, I mean, it's very simple. I bought the hair tool and I did my hair with it kind of thing. If you want a tutorial on it, let me know and I could quite possibly do one on my second channel. Right, plant number one. We have a wonderful philodendron glorious like this. It's got some aerials. Now then, these are obviously very long aerials as you can see here. And over here, sorry about that guys, we have some really shit roots. Now then, when you import a plant and you acclimate it, specifically in Lekka, if plants, when they're imported, they dry out too much in transit, which doesn't always happen, but it, it happens a lot of the time, right? If roots on a plant dry out too much and they're beyond help, they will basically, they'll desecrate, right? You'll have desecrated roots. When you saturate them again, be it in Lekka or whatever, they, they're dead roots and they will just rot. They will slowly rot. This happens on not every single plant I bring in, but the vast majority of plants. It, it takes it takes a lot to not have it happen. I think actually these Paresos haven't done it, but the Glorious have. Some plants, again, better than others. Some of them just really can't handle it. I did mention this in my um, Journey of a Rare Plant video where I talked about you know importing plants and how they're treated and everything else. And I mentioned that some types of import can screw with the root. This is one of these situations. There's a little bit of coir on these, but a lot of these have actually rotted. Now, what I usually do when I get plants into the shop I will put them in water for a period of time, then I'll get them into lecker or whatever I'm doing with them, right? And honestly, after a couple of months, if I were to look at the lecker again, I would find that at least a percentage of them, this will have happened to the root. 
That was very rude. At least a percentage of them, this will have happened to the root. And it's, it's honestly, it's unavoidable. It's what happens when roots die. I do obviously go back in wherever I can and remove that whenever I can. It's a hard process because it's guaranteed on most plants when you bring them in. Um, obviously, once I've had them and they're established, it, it doesn't happen. But definitely on imports, it does. They don't always get removed, of course. Sometimes it doesn't, but it is totally, totally normal on an import. I've had so many people come at me saying that it's not normal. It is normal. It's normal if you have a root system that is completely and utterly dried out and then you saturate it again. It doesn't even have to be a ton of water. It just has to be a little bit of water. So if you're getting imports and you're noticing that the roots are rotting, some of it is just part of of importing an acclimation and it's honestly just how it goes. Obviously put them in lecker if or whatever you're gonna do if this is you importing this plant and pretend you know this hasn't happened yet. Get it in there, get it in water for a while. I do have a video on this, you guys know this, but get it in there, get it in water. Once it's plumped up and it, it's stable and it's remained stable for a few days, you can put it in lecker or put it in whatever you're gonna do. I don't recommend soil because I think that's probably gonna make it worse, but if you're doing it in lecker, just know that in a couple of months you may have dead roots. It may or may not happen. It's just what happens. It's when roots transition from one medium to another. It's what happens when roots import and, and everything. It can happen so fast and it really can happen fast. I've had plants rot on me in about two days. It, it really, it can happen at any point. Anyway, I'm rambling. I am going to cover this in the future in a video. I have some work to do next week and I think I'm going to film it. And a lot of you guys, sorry, I'm really segueing. A lot of you guys really want me to do a day in the life of or like a behind the scenes at the shop or just like a like a work with me video. I really want to do that and I'm going to do that and I think in that video I'm probably going to be looking through some plants and taking off some of that rot because it's just what you've got to do. You've got to keep combing through. Um, so you may see it in that and that video will be coming soon. It was supposed to happen this week but guys, guys, you would not believe the week I've had. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna cut this here. I wouldn't necessarily cut this here on every plant, but Glorious are very tough and I know I can cut it there and not have any problems and the leaf is good enough. It should be okay. So I'm gonna cut that here like that. That's one propagation. I should really put these somewhere. I've got nowhere to put them. Bit of a nightmare. I'm gonna put them on top of these plants and then remember to move them before I do those. And then we'll have to come up with something else. I'm gonna cut it again here like this because these are also brand new lacquer roots, very healthy roots. I don't know if you can see that. Very, very healthy, nothing wrong with them. So put them there. And then this one, this is where the problems start because a lot of these roots are the original roots and a lot of them are fucked. I'm not gonna lie. There's some new babies and this happens so often. New baby good roots come off really bad roots. It's very infuriating. I'm just gonna gently pick it off, I think. It's probably the best way. If you're unsure if something is rotted, have a squeeze, have a gentle tug and see how it goes. Don't be forceful with it, just pull very gently. Again, if you want a video on this, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll formulate you know, a proper video on how to do this. It's not exactly, an, you know, it's, it's not an exact science is what I'm getting at. It's just very gently feeling it out and removing rot. A lot of these aren't that bad. I think it's the others. There's another plant here that's way worse. This one is not so bad, this one. So that's these roots here. Now, these roots do look darker than the other roots. What this is, is the roots are actually stained from coir from my supplier. So when I grow them, I grow them in lecker and I get these new oh, light colored roots, for example, right? You probably can't see. There are some light roots on there. When they come in, they're nearly always stained a dark color. So that is why they're actually brown. That's not all rot or anything like that. A lot of that is coir. You can still kind of see it around the base of the plant that that's coir. Again, probably can't get right up with that, but that's essentially what it is. So we've got that there for a plant and then we've got three plants out of that. So that's really good. Before I go into any more questions, I may as well tell you about the terrible week I had. And I mean, terrible week guys. I'm smiling because quite frankly, that's the best way I can deal with it. I ended up in London for like three days waiting for a box of plants that never came because they got destroyed. They got found to have pests on them. I've had this happen before. Uh, I think it was a few weeks ago now it happened. It's happened you know, with, with someone else essentially. So I don't know what's going on there. That's not fun. So yeah, I was in London for three days. I thought the box, the plants that I got was gonna clear that same fancy London place that I went to in the documentary. I think it's cursed at this point. Um, it was supposed to clear, it didn't. So we thought, right, okay, let's wait. And essentially, oh, hang on, that's a bit tougher. I'm gonna have to use the other thing. So I thought, let's wait, I'll get a hotel and I'll just pick it up in the morning because you can stay in hotels in the UK if it's business, which of course it was. So stayed in a hotel, still wasn't ready the next day. 
Uh, I had to wait around all day in the UK, in lockdown, in a van with nothing to do for about 10 hours. And then I think eventually I got the box at night time and then I stayed at another hotel halfway back because we couldn't handle the, how bad the journey was. So what I'm essentially waffling on about is I, I went to London and I was there a long time doing nothing, waiting for a box that I would never get. I got some of the plants in the box. I think I got, oh, I don't know, 10 plants that weren't seized essentially and all the rest got destroyed. So that was a bit shit. Not a fan of that. I think I'm gonna keep this one as is. The roots on this aren't good. I could cut this more, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna leave it because there aren't any roots. Sorry, I know this lecker is just absolutely dropping everywhere. Now this is a better example of rot right here. This is quite well rotted. These are clearly the original uh, roots. I have managed to grow my own at the bottom there, so they're good, but these are really shit. So obviously this plant, although it looks good, it can't go anywhere. It needs this removed. So I'm going to try my best to remove that right now. Yeah, it's just sliding off. That is definitely rot, that one. The last one, no. This one, yes, definitely. That is really triggering, isn't it? I'll try and like pull them off. I need like a soft mat to like stop that from happening. I'm really sorry, guys. I know it's not pleasant to listen to. I will do my best. So now I'm pulling all of this rot off here. Um, someone asked me, by the way, and I had to have a chuckle at this. I had to have a real good chuckle at this. Somebody asked me what my water bill is like in this shop. And honestly, I, I laugh because if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been billed yet. But I tell you what, I think me and Ben have been taking bets on, on how much the bill is and it's we're, it's not good, put it that way. There's been a lot go on in this shop. Obviously, needless to say, with all these plants, they take a lot of water. Not only that, but we've had problems with the living wall, which I will get onto in a minute because somebody asked me for an update. We've had a plethora of problems, so water has been consumed in excess because we've had to flush the wall, renew the water and everything else. Um, we've been fixing a leak that came as a result of emptying the wall. So we've been doing that. So we've had to fill it, flush it, see if it leaks. So we've been using a lot of water. No bill for it as of yet, but it's it's not looking good. I would like to do something more sustainable in here. I would love to harvest rainwater or something like that, but a lot comes with that. And quite frankly, there's, it's not as easy as it seems. I have to find a sustainable way of doing it that someone couldn't sabotage for example. I know that's not the first thing that people think about when they think about collecting rainwater, but in my case, um, someone could quite easily do that and sabotage the water that I'm feeding the plants with. So things like that aren't very easy for me. I know I'm saying this because I feel like the first thing people are going to suggest is I find a sustainable source of water, i.e. rainwater, but that's not very easy. I think it will have to come in internally through a pipe or something. It can't really be stored externally in a tank or anything because obviously someone could just screw with it and kill all my plants. It's a very quick way to do it if you want to screw anybody up with plants. So I can't really do that. I think that's it. I'm pulling on that and it's, I don't want to over pull because we might have a second round of like minimal rot, but I think that's okay there. I'm going to leave that because I think that's, it'll do. It's not going to die or anything. It'll be okay. But we're left with good healthy root here really. It's not great, but we should grow some more. So, um, ah, yes, website. I wanted to talk to you about the website real quick because I was quite horrified the other day when I went on Google and Googled my shop. I was actually testing out the SEO because we've just moved websites. If you don't know, we've just moved websites. Uh, I've done a launch as of last night. Not really a launch, but I put some products on the website to just sell at like a casual pace. And we'll just see if the website doesn't produce any obvious issues for us, let's just say. I was testing SEO on my website and I just went and obviously Googled Rare Plant Shop into Google and I didn't know. I really didn't know. I had no idea this was a thing, but my shop has reviews on Google and they are absolutely horrendous. Now, I noticed that I think I had, as of looking yesterday, there are about 10 reviews on my shop and most of them are bad. I think from memory, so don't quote me, one person left a review saying, uh, it, like a bad review because the site was under maintenance. One person, I think, said they had an issue with the, um, how do I explain it? Like the orders being canceled and stuff like that on the big launch when everything went wrong. Uh, someone left a bad review about that. Um, 
but no one's really left nice reviews. And I get it, it's because I didn't even know that, that Google was doing that on my behalf. So obviously, as with anything, people tend to leave reviews if it's bad. It's just how it is. It's a fact of life. You know, if someone has a negative experience, they're more likely to leave a review than if they have a positive one. I get that. That's just how it is. That's just life. I don't think I've ever left a review unless it's been negative, even me. Do you know what I mean? I don't see many people I know that do leave positive reviews. It's You're more inclined naturally uh, to do it if it's negative. Fine, cool. But I noticed that's pretty much all I had. And I actually shut down my uh, RPS Facebook for that same reason. Somebody asked me, yo, what happened to the Red Plant Shop's Facebook? And I shut it down. And I shut it down because people were leaving reviews and people hadn't even bought from my shop and they were leaving bad reviews. I think we were a couple of them during that massive price shaming like last year, and I honestly didn't notice. I had so much on, as you guys know. I didn't notice any of this stuff. I don't particularly Google the shop, Google myself. I certainly don't um, vet that Facebook page that was up. And people were leaving reviews. And they, it, they made it obvious they hadn't bought from me by the, what they were saying. It was just like, oh, apparently... Was one of them like, oh, apparently she doesn't acclimate, or apparently the plants are poached or something. And it's just like, that's not a review. But anyway, I shut that down. Not only that, but it is impossible to admin. A lot of people would message about orders and stuff on the Facebook and, you know, people would be very upset because we didn't respond to them and they had an issue. And it's like, well, I don't answer orders on Facebook. I don't do it on Instagram. I only do it through email. And it's not me doing it, by the way. It's not me doing it. A lot of people seem to think it's me doing it. I think I had a review on Google. I, it might have mentioned that Something like, oh, the, you know, the owner's too busy posting on Instagram to answer emails. And it's like, okay, I need you to know that I am not the person answering emails. I don't see emails. That certain things are brought to my attention if it's um, a situation where I need to decide what to do, if something's gone wrong or something like that, fine. But generally, I'm not answering emails. I'm not looking at them. I'm looking into changing that because I'd like more control over it. What I'm getting to anyway is that I got a terrible shock when I looked on uh, Google at uh, all these reviews and it's not reflective of my shop and I seriously think if it was reflective of my shop then everyone would know it and I would be talked about all the time as being absolutely terrible so with that in mind if you have bought from me and you have had a good experience then please feel free to leave that review on Google because at it, it, the minute it's very asymmetrical and I, I didn't even know that that was on Google. I had no idea. I would have said something a long time ago. So if you've had a good experience with my shop, please feel free to go and leave a review because that is just not reflective of my shop at all, literally. Um, I won't necessarily respond to the reviews because again, I didn't know they were there. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say on that really. There wasn't anything major to tell you about other than we have a new site. Hopefully it works. There are some quirks of it, some things we can't necessarily change as with any site, as with any web builder, because that's what we're using. Um, it hasn't been custom made by anybody. So if there's like translation issues, that's why it's not me doing it, it's Google doing it or whatever have you. Um, if you see anything, that seems really off with the website, please feel free to let me know and I will do my best to fix that because that is me building that. I handle most of that stuff. So if you see something that's off, just let me know. But I need you to know that certain things I actually can't control. Um, I'm not trained in CSS either. That's not what I actually went to uni for. So I don't know CSS. So there's a lot I can't fix, essentially. What I'm concerned about is the customer experience. Is it better than the last one? Does it fuck up the orders if there's a mad rush? And can it just generally make people's lives easier rather than harder? Because the last one did not do that. Oh, this is really cute. This root's gone in like a square shape. Can you see that where it's gone round the pot? That's absolutely adorable. Right. This one is fine. Literally, I think it was only one plant that got it bad. This one's absolutely fine. Can you please stop? That is awful, isn't it? Maybe you should hold it here. So that's awesome. And this is all new root from me. So that's really nice to see that. Lovely, lovely plant. Could I cut that more? I feel like I should cut it, you know, I'm saying Ooh, I'm not going to cut it, but I think maybe I should. I'm going to cut one and hope for the best. I'm going to cut this off the top and just hope. I've just snapped the root in doing that. Unbelievable. Camera probably caught me doing that. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So that's that done. We've made a huge mess. What I'm now probably going to do, um, I'm going to pick these up and I'm going to put them on the floor down there and I'm going to pick them up after I've done these paresos because they're so gangly. It's not even funny. Gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. 
Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me how the living wall is doing. If you're not in the know about how long ago was it now? Was it two, three weeks ago? I had a bit of an issue with the living wall. Things were looking really shit. And I mean really shit. Things were going yellow. They had browning on them all over the place. It was weird because nothing else had changed. And we took the liquor out, all of the liquor out of the bottom of the wall. And we tested the pH and I can't remember what it was now. Was it like four or five? It was low. So long story short, we've been going through some issues with pH and everything else. We've been flushing the wall through with clean water. We fed it a little bit and then replaced the water. We're trying to bring it back to equilibrium now. Now the plants on the wall, sorry, I'm going to have to lean down and have a look. The plants on the wall are doing all right. They're quite nice. They're quite green. There is a lot of old damage that I can see on the wall right now from obviously the pH drop, the, the acid attack that happened. I haven't removed that yet, but I will. I'm going to make sure this wall is stabilized. We're going to, I think we're going to put the lecker back in. I just don't think we're going to put quite as much in. And I will trim it up. I may patch it. There are a couple of uh, large gaps where a lot of the plants have moved. And I will probably show you it when I do a tour of the shop. The reason I haven't done a tour of the shop yet is literally because the lecker is not in the wall. It's in builder's bags in the middle of the shop and you can't walk around it. There's so much of it and there are plants everywhere. I have tree ferns in there. I have palms in there. I have another two tree ferns there. Like it's ridiculous in here. All these aisles are full. There's a scissor lift there. Literally everywhere I look, there is something. For that reason, we need to wait a little bit longer, but you will get a tour and you will get a living wall update. I think when I film the, I mean, I don't know what to call it, like the day in the life of the work with me, whatever I decide to call it, because I might make it a series, I will show you the wall in all of its um, normalness. I might trim it, I might not, it depends if I get time. So you will see it and I will explain a little bit more about what has happened to the wall and what will happen to the wall and, and how it is. Generally though, everything is growing really well. Um, the things that look the best, I would say, are funny enough the things that I say are really hardy. So we've got melanochrysum looking great. It hasn't grown much, but it, it's still fine. It hasn't tanked. The gloriosum looks fantastic. We've got some crystals that are fighting pretty well and they've come back well. What else have I got? Magnificum's on there as well. Anthurium magnificum is looking good. A lot of plants are looking quite all right on there. There's raphidophora tetrasperma on there that's looking fine. There's a lot. It's generally looking all right. It's okay. The wall is okay. But I don't want to give you a full update yet because I will do in a separate video. But for the people that asked, that is basically how it is going. You will get filled in, trust me. I will make sure that you know everything that's got on because I know that the wall is a is a curious subject for a lot of people because I've never done this before, obviously. I've never put plants on, on a wall like this. This Everything we did, we did for the first time. Um, there is a lot I would do differently, but generally speaking... It's okay. Right, next question while I start chopping these really unruly paresos. Okay, there's something a little bit more serious that I'm going to talk about uh, after this question, I think. Oh, there's two, right, I've got four questions on here and two of them are like, they're linked in twos kind of thing. So I'm going to tackle kind of two. So somebody asked me about the supply of plants and if it's going to get better or worse or whatever. And someone else asked me, on my thoughts on people attacking businesses for not being able to afford the plants. This is all obviously part of a, a, a the, the same question, essentially. Um, from my experience this year of importing plants and looking for plants, how has it been, is the first question. I'm gonna switch from my scissors to these bad boys because this is much woodier. Uh, this is Pareso Verde, by the way. These are aerials, yes, really. It's ridiculous. They need cut. That tells me these props are going to take no problem. We're not going to have any losses here. Great plant for beginners. I've mentioned this before, but they really are good. They grow really quick. They root great. That's a lot of root from Lekka from when I brought them in, I think, three months ago, maybe. They're doing great. So really easy plant if that's something that you think that you might want. They're really good. They grow gangly, but they're good. So yeah, availability of plants. Um, it's, it's kind of the same guys as what it was. I think any, this isn't, someone could have told me I had a root on my t-shirt. We all going to tell me or not? We just going to let me just have a root on my t-shirt. Anyway, I'm only messing. So 
This isn't an attack on other shops. This is me explaining the situation. Again, I know people say to me, why do you always explain yourself? Because honestly, it's easier to. It's really a lot easier to explain myself now than wait for an attack, to be quite honest. I'm working on that and I will get to that because I want to talk to you about that actually. Um, right, so not an attack on shops, but because so many more shops are popping up, the supply hasn't changed, right? Now, there are a couple more nurseries popping up in different countries. I'm not going to speak too frankly on it because I don't target certain nurseries, but obviously there is a thing with poaching at the minute and there have been some nurseries starting up and this, I'm not thinking of even a specific nursery, by the way, it's just, it's a known thing. A lot of nurseries are starting up on the back of poaching and making money that way, which is a whole thing in itself. Trust me, we could do a whole 45 minute repot with me just on that. So my point is, there are new nurseries, but not a lot, right? It, that's not accounting for a lot of nurseries. So generally speaking, the supply has kind of stayed the same, I would say. But because we have so many new shops, the, the competition for that supply is the same. So you might see 50 more shops, but the shops getting this stock in, it is hard for them. And a lot of people ask me like, well, you know, if you're going to start a business, um, what's your advice? And my, my words are the same. You know, it, it's, it's hard to start one because there is so much competition, not only against other shops, guys. The competition isn't just against other shops. It's a competition for the supply. And that's the thing. And it does get to a point, and I, I kind of touched this on the documentary, but it's fucking true. And anyone that says it isn't, hasn't had enough experience in that arena yet. But this whole rare plant thing, when you get really high at like, sorry, high level at like supplier level, it does become very much a case of, you know, you scratch my back and I'll scratch your back kind of thing. You know, I'll sell you something if you sell me something. What have you got? You have this. I'll, I will open my supply to you if you give me this. And that's not shady on suppliers. That's, I mean, it, it sounds like layer cake. I, I get it sounds ridiculous, but that's how it's working. And it's working because the supply is low. It's always low. It's just how it is. And because there are so many people wanting plants now, getting into plants because of COVID, um, I think aroids is still taking most of the hit compared to a lot of other plants because aroids encompass so many easy plants that people love and care for and there's a variety and everything else. Because so many more people are getting into it, there's now obviously more shops, but none of this is adding to the supply. It's only adding to the demand. So my experience to go back to it, because I don't want to get into that because again, that's a whole big thing, right? So I'm going to cut this. I might regret it, but I'm going to cut it. So my experience of getting plants in, it's still just as hard. Now, I have not a huge list of suppliers. I have a reasonably small list and I, I go to different suppliers for different things and I have a very good relationship with them. I do travel. I do try and go out and meet people. I build relationships with my suppliers. And as a result, sometimes I get offered things maybe before other people might, and I don't want anyone to say that the wrong way. It's purely based on an established relationship that I have built with them because I've been going a little bit longer than some of the new shops and everything else. Okay. Because it's not just about selling to a shop. It's from a supplier's point of view as well. Honestly, guys, there's so many facets to this. Can you tell? But from a supplier's point of view, um, there's not a lot of ways I can say this without sounding like a nasty pasty as we say in Britain, I don't mean it this way, but a lot of new shops are less experienced in importing and the perils of, um, say, something dying in the mail or something like that. And a lot of new shops don't realize that, for example, in a lot of cases, not all cases, but ref refunds or replacements or whatever usually aren't an option, right? A lot of shops don't know this. And a lot of suppliers at the minute are choosing to go with, I mean, it's the saying, better the devil you know. They're choosing to go with more of the existing shops because the existing shops are used to importing. They know how it works. They know what things they are responsible for and what things the other party are responsible for. And it's just more of an established trusting relationship. And as a result, I think the shops that were there before this came along are inherently safer and I know that sucks. I'm not saying it's right. It's just what happens when you develop a relationship over time. Um, I'm not saying that's blanket how it is. I'm saying in a lot of scenarios, 
that is a dynamic that is at play a little bit. So not only that, obviously, but some of the more established shops out there um, have more capital to either get more units because they have more capital in the units, the plants units cost more and they're able to take a larger volume off the supplier as well. This is another thing because shop A has, I mean, I'm not going to put out money on there because it, it's so subjective depending on what you're buying, of course. Shop A has a lot more money and can order a lot more plants. Shop B is new and can't. For that supplier's workload, in terms of phytosanitary inspection, preparing the plants, boxing them up. From a supplier's point of view, what would you rather do? Would you rather do one box of 200 plants or would you do five, bo sorry, four boxes, I can't add today, four boxes of 50 plants for the same work? You're probably gonna do what comes the most easy, the, the, the way that you've done before. It's really a case of better the devil you know, I, I honestly think. I'm not saying that's how it works now and you've got to know a guy. I'm just saying the supply isn't there. So suppliers are choosing who they do business with a little bit more, I think. Obviously, there is the retail element. Don't get me wrong. There is that as well. That's another facet because a lot of places aren't doing wholesale. Um, my suppliers aren't doing wholesale. I'm buying a retail price most of the time. It's how it is. I've done a video on this. Um, but a lot of of, of suppliers are doing that anyway. But even that kind of applies because if you want to do 50 boxes of one plant to 50 customers buying from the US or the UK or wherever they're buying, or you can do one box of 50 plants for the same price, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, I'm not saying it's right. It's not wrong, by the way. Um, it's just how it is. So that is a dynamic at play that is affecting plants and it's affecting what it looks like on the front lines. So it might look like there's a lot of shops, but the supply within those shops is very low. That's kind of what is at play. Sorry, I've just looked at my monitor and I look like I'm really washed out. The sun is out and I can't do jack shit about it. I really can't. Um, that's how it kind of is at the minute. I don't want to cut that that far because that's pushing out a new leaf. Oh, I'm going to cut it here. Oh God. I didn't want to cut that, but I have. It'll be fine. That's how it is at the minute. Supply is not plentiful. Someone said, um, someone asked me like, is it, is it going to get better or worse? I can't see it getting better. And that's because new shops are coming out because people individually are looking at the prices of these plants and going, Hey, well, why, why aren't I doing that as a business? That looks incredibly lucrative. And it is, obviously it is, but as, as a result, the barrier to entry is now a lot more because there's so much competition for the supply. It's not just a case of low supply. There's so many more factors on that. Sorry, I know that's a bit like layer cake and no one was wanting to hear that. That's just something to be aware of, I guess. Um, it it kind of sucks, really. It's it's not it's not ideal, is it? Two seconds, I need to cut this. I need to concentrate. Ooh. So yeah, do you think it's going to get better? No, because more shops are coming into the arena. Um, so you'll get 50 more shops, but those shops won't be stocking 200 plants. They might be stocking 20 or less, or maybe five. And that's going to be very difficult. Also, um, if certain shops aren't as experienced with um, importing and acclimating and they have more loss than other shops or other nurseries that do it more, then that's going to even lower the supply because even though the supply has been purchased at the top, you've now lost half of it through acclimation. So that's not ideal either. The, obviously, these things are unavoidable, obviously. But that's another factor, right? That's all adding to it. So the more people you've got buying plants in, the less there is supply anyway. Not only that, but if, if a shop is holding on to it for propagation, then it's less available before it becomes more available. It, there's so much at work. It's, it's really quite a complicated question. And I didn't mean to bore anyone with my answer, but that's kind of my answer. Supply is not good at all. There was a, did I answer the other half of that? What was the other half of that question? So I'm getting like crap all over my phone. Yeah, all right, so this is the other, the other part of it. So, sorry, the other part of it was people attacking businesses because they can't afford the plants. This is because of all the reasons I've already mentioned. This is because of supply and demand. People comment on my videos saying, oh, you know, this is capitalism as at its finest. It's like, but that's, that's how nearly anything works. Unfortunately, food costs money to feed us. It sucks. Don't get me wrong. It sucks to live in that kind of world, but that's the kind of world we live in. You cannot blame individual people in shops selling these plants for their market value at the time. You can't blame people for that. I don't understand people that blame people for that. 
Obviously, I have my opinions on that because, as you know, I famously got torn a new one last year when I launched this place. Sorry, this might be a bit noisy. I'm going to stop a second while I separate these because there's leper everywhere. So, yeah, um, and I remember when I was getting that heat, that heat, though, on the shop on my Instagram mainly, that's where I could see it anyway, there were a number of people that brought up very good points. Um, one of them was, I think they likened, I mean, I don't, <laughs> don't think it was meant quite as literally as how they meant it. Um, but someone basically said, you know, would you go to a Michelin star restaurant and complain about the prices, walk in and complain? No, you wouldn't. Um, can I afford to eat Michelin star food? No, not really. Not really. Not my bag anyway, but if, you know, I couldn't anyway. Do I complain about it? No. For example, I was shopping, I think, was it four days ago now? I went shopping because lockdown has lifted in the UK and I walked into a store and I found a handbag that I've been thinking about getting for a while. I wanted to try it on because I wasn't sure because we've been in lockdown for four months. I didn't know if I'd like it. I do love it. I wanted to try it on. I thought, yes, that's what I want. But I didn't have the budget to buy it. It was out of my price range because it's a designer fucking handbag and people don't have this kind of money in their back pocket, right? But I knew it's something I wanted to save up for. Now, you don't see me walking into that shop having a go at the company selling the bag, whether it's overpriced or not. You don't see me doing that. You don't see people doing that. It's not what the done thing is. You're supposed to just scroll on by if you don't like prices. I've said this a million times. Not only that, there's another parallel to be gained here. And I know it sounds weird me talking about handbags, but it's the first thing that really came to mind. But there's another parallel here in the fact that these designer companies have price hikes. So say a designer handbag, for example, uh, starts off at £2,000. Every year or every six months or every four months or every three months, it might go up by £200. So even people that um, want to save up for a plant and they've almost saved up and then the prices go up and then they have a go for the shops for it, it's a bit nuts because in the shop's case, in the plant shop's case, it's a case of supply and demand, right? If they can't get it in, they're not going to let it go for cheap. That's stupid. Plus, if anyone got these plants cheap, they would quite simply get it for cheap and sell it for a lot of money on Facebook. If you think that shops don't know that, we do. It's another reason why we won't make it super, super cheap because we know that people are going to do that anyway. What's the point, right? Now, there are other factors as well. In the case of the designer handbag, of course, you've probably got COVID. There are other bullshit factors at play as well in terms of like exclusivity and making it, keeping it bougie, keeping it classy or whatever. So they put their prices up for that as well. A lot of it is COVID though. A lot of it, you know, the materials aren't as available, staff aren't as available and everything else and everything costs more money. If I had to put a, a penny in a jar for every time I've seen a product that I've bought that's gone down in quality considerably since COVID, I'd be quite rich, rich enough to buy them at the new prices. Do you see what I'm saying? A lot's changed with COVID. The supply in this situation with plants has changed due to COVID, but it's more about people getting into it with lockdown and other factors. It's a little bit different. But my my bad points today, can you tell out? I'm not, I'm not as articulate as I normally am. I think it's the heat. My point is that you don't have a right to be able to afford certain things in life it's it, it's shit don't get me wrong but it's literally the way the world ticks it's how it is and i don't see why people single out specifically um either plant shop owners or people that work in like the art sector or things like that or music people seem to really single these types of people out as not as being able to give criticism on that kind of thing and it's not things are worth what they are worth unfortunately if you guys think that I like selling plants that I used to sell for maybe like, I don't know, taking the case of Philodendron McDowell, right? I had that on my website. Uh, I'm filming this. So yesterday, now, this is Thursday. I put them up on Wednesday. Um, I put some up on the website for 200 pounds, right? They are larger than what I used to sell. Don't get me wrong, but it was 200 pounds I put it up for. They were selling when I started my shop and even just a year into my shop, I was doing them for about 65 pounds. I bought them in at a ridiculous price, don't get me wrong. But if you think I enjoy that, I don't. I really don't enjoy that. I know that's not good for anybody. And I know that it's a plant that grows out of the ground and it's like, I get why people are annoyed about it, but seriously, it's how it is. And blaming the shop is just a really shit thing to do. It really is. It really is. There's no, 
no one has a right to get things cheap. It's just how the world is. I'm not saying I fucking agree with it because I don't. Like there's certain basic things I think we do have the right to have, i.e. things like healthcare. That's more important. Why aren't we talking about that shit rather than talking about the price of plants? Why aren't we talking about healthcare and all the other shit things? You know what I'm saying? It's shit, but for the love of God, don't shame a shop for it. They're just trying to put food on the table like everyone else. You know what I'm saying? It's how it is. I see other people attacking other shops on Facebook and a lot of time in groups. Oh, when did this happen? Oh, I don't know when this happened. That's quite sad. That's obviously me. I see people attacking plant shops in Facebook groups by saying, oh, I can get that from like Indonesia for $40. And it's like, you really can't. Why do people keep saying that? You really can't. You might be able to get something for $40, really small, from a smaller seller, probably definitely without phytosanitary documentation. It's then going to cost you, when you import that plant into your country, you might have VAT on that, you certainly have import tax and everything else. If it has to be inspected in your country, you then have more fees and everything else. And I tell you what, I don't mean to bring it back to myself all the time, but you have to understand I work alone. These are my only examples. But a lot of people went at me in my shop last year, obviously, again, for the prices. Um, and a lot of people were saying, oh, you can get this from like Indonesia for $40. It's like, you cannot do that. If you import it, you need FITO. You will have to pay import tax unless you're doing it illegally. Maybe that's what you meant. Maybe you were saying you could do it illegally for $40 by not declaring it as a plant on the box. Because I tell you now, the import tax and everything else and the inspections will set you way back. And so many people I have seen on Facebook who were slagging me off last year. I've seen them complaining on Facebook groups, get this, about how horrendous it is importing plants. This, I think these people that I saw, I didn't see them, I was told about them. Um, I'm not in these groups anymore, as you know. Um, these people were talking about importing plants into the UK and how just generally terrible it was and how expensive it was. Why is it only expensive now? Were well, you not doing it legally? You should have had a phytosanitary certificate to bring it into the UK. Granted, things weren't necessarily inspected, but they should have been. So my answer to that is I was paying that money all through last year. I was paying it the year before. I've always done it the right way. I've always paid the import tax, the inspection, everything else. My premises has been inspected, everything else. All of that cost is put into the plants. So I don't understand how people were getting them really cheap legally. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I think... People are increasingly shaming shops now in a nutshell because part of the reason why is because they can no longer import themselves and have it cost effective for whatever reason. And I'm mainly talking about the UK here. Don't get me wrong. Very biased answer. But a lot of cases in the UK, people are getting very annoyed because now they feel like they have to buy from shops and not import because it's so expensive. All I can say is the shops have been doing it the whole time, if they've been doing it correctly, of course. Nothing's changed for us. It's always been this expensive. And I won't have been the first shop, obviously, to get price shamed. This isn't a conversation about price shaming, of course. You're asking me what I think of people that shame shops. And in a nutshell, to summarize this, you don't know the full thing. You clearly don't know how much it costs to import. You don't know how much uh, loss is involved, everything else. Inspections on the premises, inspections for the paperwork to send it out, everything else. There's so much that goes into it. Lighting, electricity, water, everything. Do not shame someone else for their prices. If you don't like them, scroll on. I'm done with that. That took a long ass time. That took a long ass time to talk about. Now, honestly, guys, I, I can feel that just like melding into a big rant about stuff and I don't want to dwell on that kind of stuff. Um, I've been burnt a lot by this and that's obviously um, quite prominent, I guess. And I want to talk about it and it actually brings me on very nicely to this. So I have a couple of questions and I'm going to read them out and I'm going to kind of talk about it the best I can because it's all linked and I thought it was really... Um, really quite relevant and I want to talk about it. I feel like I'm ready to talk about it. So I'm going to stop the camera and start it because we're nearly out of time. I can only do 30 minute segments. So I'm going to stop and start and then I'm going to take a drink. And I'm going to get back to you in two minutes. I've got the same Invisalign train, by the way, that I've had since, let me think, since tray 11 and it, I should be on tray 15. I've had it in for weeks because I need refinements, mid treatment. So I'm on the same tray and I'm just hating my life, quite honestly. You'll get a video on that, by the way. I'm just going to wait till my new attachments are fitted and everything else, and then I'll do a video on how it's going. And my mid-review on Invisalign. 
Anyway, so there might not be much potting because I think this is a bit more serious. So sorry if you get bored by me stood here, but I had a few questions. I get some of these all the time. Some of these are asked of me. Some of these are said about me. And I kind of just want to say my piece on it because I'm kind of ready to. So I've been doing a little bit of soul searching, shall we say. So I might not get through all of these pots today, by the way, I might just do them off camera because I don't think anyone really cares about me potting these up. We'll see. The three things I have written down, they're in different orders, so I need to find where they are. Okay. Sorry, there's two, not three. So one is, why are you only negative on Instagram? And the other one um, is, were you bullied as a kid? You seem to let haters get to you. Right. Okay. Serious now. First thing, um, I've been meaning to talk to you guys about this for a while. Um, I just, I guess I haven't got around to it till now. Oh, I'm getting nervous. I don't like that. I never get nervous. But the thing about me only negative on Instagram, I hear what you're saying, but I disagree with it. Um, I feel like people only see the negative um, a lot of the time because I, I see people, sorry, this is going to come out very not articulate because I'm literally talking about this on the fly and I wasn't sure if I was going to really go for it today. I, I didn't know. I still don't know. But a lot of people see what I write on Instagram and they only take the negatives and I don't get why they're doing that. The amount of people that could write about me tomorrow, and they do, that I only talk about negative stuff there's quite a lot. I remember a while ago, I was, I think, did, did Ben show me it? Somebody showed me it. But somebody was basically saying that I only ever post nasty things on my stories. I only ever post like crap, bad stuff, whatever. And I honestly thought, what? There's a period of time where I was, I was rarely even on Instagram. And I think they'd said that like, over the past month, that's all she's done. And I'm like, I don't think I've posted anything on my stories, really other than like questions for a repot with me or pictures of the shop because I like to do that quite a lot. I love doing that. I love walking around on a morning and taking a picture and, and, you know, putting it on my stories. I never do full posts. I need to change that. Someone actually wrote in my question box, you know who you are, saying, could you please just put more pictures on your Instagram? I will. I need to work on that. So I don't know why, but people are only seeing the negative. And I find that really interesting because people criticize me for that a lot. And I'm going to take that as criticism because that's something I've been working on. I want to get into that. But genuinely, so many people are saying it and it's just not true because I've looked back at my Instagram post and I see that there's very few things that could even be construed as negative. Like, I think I put a post up on my Instagram stories, was it last week maybe? It was something about Pink Congo because I've seen a lot of um, plants pop up because I follow the hashtag and people were... Um, drooling over Pink Congo, basically, and there was nothing in anybody's description about it being fake or anything, and there was hardly anyone commenting in the comments that it was fake, and I was like, oh, shit. So I just put up something really friendly on Instagram, just saying, look, it'd be cool if people posting these pictures could just say in the descriptions that, you know, they revert, and they, they don't stay pink forever, for example. And I think I said, look, if we could put it at the top of the description rather than the bottom, that's great, because I can see, I can see people are getting misleaded, for example. Um, and we don't want that because there's a lot of new um, people getting into plants, as we've talked about today, and people won't know this. They won't know this, and they will spend a lot of money and, and not get something that they really want. And that's a shame. That's, that's not, that, that is misuse of um, plant business and stuff like that. But I don't know if people construe that as being negative. That's not being negative. That's me just giving a little, um, what's the word? Just a friendly suggestion, I guess. I think I even said friend, friendly reminder or something. Like, that's not being, being negative, guys. It's not. Um, it, it's hard sometimes because people ask me, um, people send in these topics, right, for me to talk about. I do talk about the good ones as well. Um, they're not even bad topics, I think, I talk about. They're just, like, meaty topics, I would say. A lot of people send me topics and they like me because I do speak my mind. And I don't, I don't shy away from subjects. I don't... Um, I don't just give a rosy delivery like a lot of other YouTubers do. I'm not just talking about plant YouTubers, I'm not about anybody. So don't read into that, really don't. Um, but I just kind of say it how it is. And I, I know that generally people like that. But I don't necessarily intend to come off as negative. Now I know in the past I've paid more attention to negativity than positivity. And I mean, someone asked me obviously if I was bullied as a kid. 
this isn't like a, a major background dump or anything like that. I was bullied as a kid, um, FYI. I'm not going to go into it. There's, there's, it doesn't affect me. Well, I thought it didn't affect me in my adult life. I guess it does. But it doesn't hurt me to think about it. Um, I was bullied an awful lot as a kid. I did not mix well with other children. I generally had a, a really shit time growing up. Like that, that's honestly an understatement. It's seriously an understatement. So, um, I guess you could say leading on to that, I've had some really bad partners as well in relationships. I've picked the wrong people and I've, I've ended up really hurt, um, over the years. My, my friends and family are like privy to this, but obviously no one else is. That's fine. But it's been really difficult to separate hate from criticism. And I'm trying as hard as I can to learn the difference, but it's so hard because I'm having to ask people close to me, like, is that criticism? You know, if someone says something or someone does something, is that criticism or is it hate? I'm having to learn at the minute by asking other people. Now, the problem is, and this is my honest answer, sorry if I'm blown out on the monitor, that looks ridiculous right now. The problem is that most people close to me say that it's hate and not criticism. Um, so it's, it's sometimes really hard to judge it, but I'm trying very, very hard to ignore the, the negative stuff that I perceive as, as hate. And I'm trying to detect the criticism. The problem is that's not very easy. And I guess I am very defensive. I am very defensive. You know, when I make my videos, I do apologize a lot. A lot of people say to me, um, God, you apologize for everything. They either say, God, why do you apologize for everything? Or they will say, I wish you didn't apologize for everything. Or they just generally, they're not, um, comfortable with me doing that. And I do sometimes notice that in editing. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It really depends. I've tried to not do that recently. I've tried to work on that. I've tried to own it. And I think last week's video now, which is the best and worst philodendron, I think I did that video and a couple of people were like, yes, like own it. You know, um, you say you're not a professional, but you have 4,000 plans. I think you, you know, you tick that box kind of thing. Um, someone said, look, I love that you're just owning it. You're not apologizing anymore. I love this. Um, my own mother has also said a similar thing. She said like, your energy is better. You just seem more confident. You're, you're more positive. It's great. I have done work on that. It's not easy for me because I, I'm not trying to make myself sound like a victim at all, but I, do get more hate than the average plant YouTuber. I think, I genuinely think that's fair to say. I don't think that's me being negative and that's another thing. I think I should be able to say that and it not be negative because it's what I do with that concept that is whether it's positive or negative, right? Um, so I don't really know what I'm trying to say here. I, I've just kind of got a camera rolling and I'm just kind of talking to you about it, but I need you to know that I've done a lot of reflecting on it and I'm trying to actively work on it um, I'm being, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm considering getting therapy for it. Um, because I feel like I've been plummeted into this weird situation where like I had a boss at work and I, I sometimes feel like now I've got like a hundred thousand people that are my boss. I joke about it sometimes. And that really is testament to how I sometimes feel about this channel. I feel like I'm at everyone's mercy all the time. Um, I want to really address that and I guess just not fix it, but I want to look at things differently and I'm, I'm trying, but I'm pretty limited, right? Because it is literally just me here. There's no, there's no one that can really help me at the minute. It is just me doing this on my own and it's weird doing this as a job. Let me tell you, there are so many weird fucking quirks that come with this that you couldn't even imagine. You really couldn't imagine. Um, it's difficult and it would be cool to speak to someone that is essentially professional that can give me some advice that's maybe more tailored to my situation. For example, um, a lot of people might say if you have a lot of people chatting shit about you or hating on you, you know, just ignore it. And while that's nice, um, it doesn't really work in my situation, in a lot of situations. Take, for example, not bringing it up, but things with a lot of other YouTubers um, not at the minute because, you know, people are guilty of something fine, but, um, I can't think of an example because I haven't watched YouTube. I don't want to say an example if it's wrong, but people that are AJ falsely accused of something or 
something gets said about some someone that isn't true or something like that, it's you can't really ignore it because it can hurt your entire career, your earnings, everything. Um, it's it's hard to ignore things, and sometimes you actually can't, guys. Sometimes you actually can't. So it's about learning that line and what to ignore and what not to ignore. And if you ignore things, you get a lot of shit for ignoring things too. Um, because people just go at you. Are you going to address this? Are you going to address that? And it's like, fuck, I don't know what I should be addressing. I don't know what I shouldn't be addressing. It's hard to differentiate because it's just me. There's no handbook on this, you know? And my life has changed so fucking dramatically from two years ago when I was just a programmer in my bedroom with a few houseplants. Obviously, it's a lot different. And I haven't really had time to stop and learn or to adjust to any of this along the way. Um, again, not a sob story. See, I'm doing it again. I'm apologizing. What I'm trying to get at is I recognize um, that sometimes I take things negatively and I end up fixating on the negative and I shouldn't. And I'm, I need you to know that I've done work on that and I'm trying to still work on that. I'm trying really, really hard. It doesn't help that I was a programmer because in my job, if something's working, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You don't think about it again. If something works, you pay attention to what doesn't work. It's all about what doesn't work. And when you do that for a living, you are pre-programmed, excuse the pun, to seek out what doesn't work and make it work. Do you know what I'm saying? If it works, it's all about, well, could it work better? Could it work better? It's never this is great as it is. And it's part of the job. And I think my personality type is well suited to that, I guess. Um, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I just, I want you to know that I, I do recognize that I, I am overly apologetic. I'm overly defensive. It's, I mean, I, I've heard that it's a trauma response. I think someone said that on a video once. They're like, oh, she's apologizing because it's a trauma response. And I've been on TikTok a little bit and people are saying the same thing. So I guess it is. I'm trying. I just want you to know I'm trying. I don't want, I would hate to think that people come to this channel and they're always like, oh, do you know what I mean? I don't want that. And I, I genuinely, a genuine apology from me to you right now. If it has come off that way, I'm very sorry. I didn't intend to create that kind of environment. I will always still say how it is, hence I'm doing it now, right? But saying it how it is doesn't have to be negative. I'm not saying it always has been, because I don't think it has. But I've never meant it to be perceived as only negative. I try and ignore a lot of people now. I just, I block them. If someone tags me in something, I block them. I delete them. No one knows about it. Um, whenever I have responded in the past, I will say this. People seem to, res people seem to say that I respond to every tiny little thing. And I think I said this before. It's cute that you think I don't get that much shit. Uh, I respond to like 0.01%, um, depending on my mood and depending on how serious it is. So. I'm trying really hard, guys. It's not going to be easy for me because I feel like this is just an extension of the shit that I've had through most of my adolescent and adult life. But I'm trying very hard to improve it. I'm taking active steps. I'm doing a lot of self-reflection. I might go to therapy. I'm going to do it because I don't want to live like this. I don't want to apologize for anything I'm doing because this is my channel. My name is on it. This is my business. My name is on it. I got to where I am. I worked hard. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm here because of me. And I really need to harness that. And I think when I do, a lot of people might say that I'm being arrogant or, I don't know, I'm up my own ass. But I tell you what, if I'm not up my own ass, who the hell is going to be? Because surely it's just up to me to be that way, right? It's part of owning your own business anyway. You've got to really be for you and for what you're doing. You've got to believe in yourself. But... I really, I need to be like that. This is my channel. I, I got it to where it is. I got this shop to where it is. And I should be proud of that. And I, I'm trying to be, and I'm trying to focus on that very much so. So I'm going to do my best to keep pursuing that. Now, in terms of these videos, I'm, I'm so blown out. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted by how blown out that is. In terms of these videos, I will always say it how it is. If you send in a, a topic that is perceived as negative, I either will or won't talk about it. I don't want you to do anything different. I just want you to know that I'm trying to do different things. Does that make sense? Like, if there's a, if a serious topic that comes in and I think I want to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. And I, I might be talking about it because nobody else is. 
That's another thing. Because I like to tell it how it is, and no one else is talking about certain things. I'd like to be the one to talk about it, because if I don't talk about it, nobody's going to talk about it, and it should be talked about. So again, for the millionth time, there's a lot of facets to this, but I recognize I've maybe been a bit negative in the past, and I'm trying to change it now. One last thing on this. There is still a difference between criticism and hate. And a lot of people are still crossing that line and they are saying nasty things. And then when they get a response or someone else responds or whatever, they'll say, well, it's just criticism. No, you need to work on yourself and understand that that's not criticism. You can't say anything you want to a person and say it's criticism. Criticism, a lot of the difference between hate and criticism is the tone in which it's delivered, I always find. And I think if it sounds nasty, nasty language is used, or the tone is bad, it's more than likely to be hate than criticism. Um, if you are going to deliver criticism, it's best to start with a good thing first and then deliver the criticism. So you're not getting confused to an outside reader, whether it's me or someone else, as to how you mean it. Um, that's a really good way of delivering criticism and that that would that helps me receive criticism not that i'm saying it's on you but certain people need to be stopped across the board that deliver hate as criticism because it's gaslighting and god forbid the amount of times i've had people do that to me throughout my lifetime you would not believe it if i told you i'm not here for that so i'm doing what i can it's hard sometimes because i do seem to get more shit than the average person probably I have to take a breath before I say it because I'm not comfortable saying it. I'm quite successful. I don't like saying that. I, I don't, I genuinely don't feel comfortable saying that. But I have a, a business that's doing very well and I guess the channel's doing well and I'm, I'm just, I'm doing all right and I made it out of nothing and I guess that probably pisses people off. But I wish these people would just go off and do it themselves rather than getting pissed at me for it. Like, if you want to be successful, why be mad at me for it? Why don't you just go out there and do better than me? Random, right? Anyway, rant over on that. I'm actually not going to pot these on camera because that's not, that wasn't going to come out in an articulate way. It obviously still hasn't. It's very waffly. I'll probably not cut it much because I, I don't want to overly tailor what I've said. Um, I knew I couldn't necessarily plant while saying all that. So I'm just going to do it off camera because the, the noise is, is bad. Let's be honest. It's bad. This hitting the liquor. That's horrible. I'm sorry. Um, I just wish I potted with soil. That's the one shit thing about Lekka for repods. It just doesn't, doesn't work. So that is it for this repot with me. I have propagations. They will be a while. I have so many of these. It's ridiculous. I don't know where I'm going to put them. Can you see that up here, actually? A little bit. You can see a little bit of it. This up here that I'm kind of swatting with my, um, my bottle is my UPI. If I pull it down, you see that? Yeah. Massive UPI just pew, over the top. It looks awesome. What do I have here before we go? I have some billies up here that are getting a little bit unruly. I have philodendron Florida bronze here. I have a shit ton up there. These are just the ones down here. I have here some Monstera Deliciosa aurea. I have them here as well. Can you see any of these where my bottle is? Yes, there's some McDowell here and another Pariso randomly. There's some Mojito, some yellow variegated, some white variegated. Here I have some Glorio, some props. They're not looking amazing because they're propagations and they're just a bit, you know, they're turning. Here are some mothers, some mothers, I think the rest are up there. Here's some yellow Syngonium. Here's some white Syngonium. Uh, over here, Philodendron, uh, Jerry Horn. Uh, more up there. We have a, is that Linamii? Philodendron Linamii here. We have the amazing brown boy. I hope you can see this. This is awesome. Let me see if I can see it on the monitor. Yeah, this is awesome, by the way. I don't think it's Modenum. I had this out on a video a while ago in a haul, and I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't think it's Modenum because it stays dark. It's not going green. And I think Modenum goes green afterwards. And this one just isn't. So I think it is something else, guys. It's got a new leaf coming out right now, but it goes the best color. I mean, oh shit, boy, that looks good. Anyway, I have some Regal here, some baby Regals. I think I've got some Magnificum, I can't tell. I have some Chocos in a pot. I have some Gloriosum. Down here I have Burley Marks, and I don't think you can see any of that. Yeah, there's some more elbows there. I've got quite a few things in this aisle. Generally. Oh, some Thai up there as well. And then further up, I've got like um, Splendid, 
uh, tripartite. What is that? I don't know what that is. I've got some variegated alocasia. I've got ghost. I've got a shit ton, honestly. I have so much work to do. It's not even funny. So uh, this is like 0.0001% of what I've got to do. So I'm going to get on and do that. I'm going to pot these up. As I say, it's too noisy. I'll try and come up with a way of doing it. Maybe, maybe I just have to cut it all when I edit. I don't know. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. Uh, that was long. That was not articulate today. I feel like I'm normally a little bit better with my words than that. I'm very hot and I'm very tired. Um, but I, I hope my messages got across. Uh, and I guess I will see you in the next video. I have already recorded it before this repot with me. And what was it? It was a best and worst plants for beginners anthurium. So I have a shit ton of anthurium all around me that you will see next week after this week. So until such time, I will love you and leave you. Any video requests down below, any comments on what I've said, I'd be really interested to see your feedback because, because I know that people that comment on my videos generally are the positive people. So I would really love it if you could give me your take on how you perceive the way that I deal with things in terms of um, criticism and hate, I guess. Uh, I would like to hear your take. And please word it nicely and, and help me take it as criticism, I guess. Um, don't just call me a bitch, even though I might be one. Um, if you have thoughts on, on how, um, I guess I've been coming across or, or anything that I've said that you think that I should hear, then please leave them down below. You're entitled to your opinion, of course. I'm just asking that you're nice about it, I guess. Um, that's it for this video. I will love you and leave you. I'm very hot and sweaty. I'm immediately going to go and edit this now so I can get it up to you for tomorrow because London's really sent me back this week. I didn't expect to be in London half the week and it's royally screwed me over. So without further ado, I will love you and leave you and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.